Lovely. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Christianity in Africa more directly. And it, it seems like Christianity in Africa seems simultaneously encouraging and discouraging. So positively, Africa along with South America and parts of Asia are one of the areas of tremendous growth of Christianity in the world. And where, for instance, uh, Europe appears to be in decline, Africa in some places has, has sprung up as a bastion of truth. So I even think of perhaps um, Gafcon and the, the Anglican African bishops who are leading the way within the Anglican Church worldwide. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, we, we've got to admit that there, there are some very strange things happening under the name of Christianity in Africa. I mean, for instance, we had, we had that publicity of the Zimbabwean pastor who was on the phone to God pretty recently. And did you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's, there's been grainy footage of, of angels appearing in, in meetings. Um, there's been pastors who've been spraying doom in people's faces, um, getting people to eat grass or, or to drink alcohol. As you think about Christianity in Africa in general, what are some of the things that you view as, as some of the, the positives for which we can praise God? And what are the things that you are extremely concerned about? Yes, thank you very much. Um, I think, first of all, um, I'm very ex excited and encouraged about uh, the Christian faith in Africa. Uh, so when I speak negatively, it's because I'm a son of the soil. I'm one of you, and consequently, as, as one of you, I definitely need to express freely uh, what is going wrong. But on the bigger picture, there is a greater responsiveness to the gospel. Um, you know, young adults like yourselves have come to embrace the Christian faith um, and, and want to um, totally enjoy the, the unsearchable riches of Christ. It's it's like that in a lot of places uh, I go to. Uh, my own church, for instance, has three camps for uh, young people across the year. Um, uh, over Easter, we have about uh, 250. Uh, in July, we have about 400. And then in December, we have about 500. So when you put all that together, and that's just one church running uh, with so many young people, it's it speaks a lot about the future. Um, on campuses where I preach, you will find there will be Christian groups like this. Um, you go largely into uh, the Western world and you, you, you can hardly manage to put together uh, a group of 20 to 30 uh, young people uh, to do anything serious in terms of Bible study with them. So clearly, God has been moving on the African soil and uh, a lot of the, the investment that took place in the last 100 years is bearing fruit for which we, we ought to be grateful. I'm definitely concerned about the, the, the kind of Christianity that has now been accepted inside evangelicalism that, that is basically the African traditional religion that has sort of gone round and the witch doctor has just changed his clothes and then come in uh, to the church through the back door. Uh, I'm, I'm very concerned about that because it's clearly not the message of the Bible and we, we are giving uh, a place to human beings that should only be given to God and, and that's, that's definitely not uh, right. I mean, we have cases in Zambia, and these are in newspapers, where a, a, a pastor's wife is divorcing him because he's impregnated 10 women in the church. <laughs> and it's in the newspaper, there's even a picture of the pastor with these women. And now the, 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 the wife is saying, you know, enough is enough. Now clearly, under normal circumstances, that's a person excommunicated already. But in this particular case, he's saying anybody who doesn't want should go. He's remaining with the church. And, and the church leaders seem to be living with that. And the um, prosperity gospel is thriving largely on, on the continent again. 
not because it's making people richer, it's making the preachers richer um, at the expense of, of the congregants um, and so forth. So it's, it's those issues. And to me, the fact that the evangelical church leaders have not drawn the line. Could, could you explain what you mean by evangelical? What I mean by that would be those that teach repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as the way of salvation. Those that speak the phrase, you must be born again if you are to enter the kingdom of heaven. Um, those kinds of churches that claim that the Bible is the uh, inspired word of God, etc., etc. Uh, once upon a time, uh, they, they would not have uh, countenanced this at all. Um, but for some reason now, we have become meshed into, into one. And there's very little Bible study in terms of just allowing the Bible to speak for itself. It's always a little phrase there, a little phrase there that I keep saying has been tortured until it confesses a lie. <laughs> and, 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 and sometimes we find it's, it's up to university students and professionals who are allowing this. It's almost like before they get to church as they're getting out of the car, they unlock the, the skull, take out the brain and <laughs> And then they go into church so that anything absurd, ridiculous, they just accept and take the good Bibles. And the Bible is supposed to be more sufficient. And, and so I, I tend to think that we are losing ground and unless the evangelical church rises to say this book is all sufficient, the Holy Spirit uses His Word to sanctify us and our lives are supposed to be more and more godly, more and more holy as God is working in us. Unless we get back to that, we will lose a golden opportunity that uh, God has given us to become the next major missionary movement in the history of the world. We will lose.